This is a phenomenal short explanation of how AI works that a lot of people don't even know. Kind of crazy. You're trying to influence AI or large language models and you don't know how they work. You got to first know just the basics of how they work. So this write up is from the legend Lily Ray, one of my favorite people in SEO. Lily Ray will be coming on the podcast either in January or February. We're working out a, a date and time. She is awesome. And I'm always sharing her stuff. She said, she said this on X. She said, I think top five SEOs article is one of the most helpful and comprehensive breakdowns of how ChatGPT most likely works that I've ever read. Note parts of the article are speculative, but David provides a lot of compelling evidence for why ChatGPT is most likely to work this way. Absolutely worth reading the whole thing, but here is the TLDR. So it's TLDR, really short, really good. I'm going to share it. Then I'm going to share some ways that you can influence large language models. That's what I got for you on our last episode of 2025. Woo! Wow. Last episode of 2025. Here it goes. ChatGPT works a lot like a search engine like system. It pulls in real world info and stitches it together rather than actually thinking on its own. It doesn't automatically browse the web. It only goes looking things up when the system decides it actually needs to. I actually wrote about this. I have an article on edwardsturm.com. This was my newsletter on Sunday. AISCOGO AEO, how to get shown in LLMs in 2026. I hope you will check it out. I think it's really good. It's linked to at the top of edwardsturm.com because I think it's a very valuable article. And something that I say in it is there's a rule of thumb. If the question depends on what's true right now, a search is likely to be triggered within ChatGPT. If it is about how things work or what something means, this usually isn't likely to trigger a search. Just a valuable rule of thumb for you. Back to Lily Ray's TLDR, behind the scenes, it's not just one model doing everything. First, a small model looks at your question and decides whether the answer can come from training data or needs a search, what I was saying. If a search is needed, this is interesting, another model handles finding and filtering web results before the main model writes the response. Those search decisions are based on probabilities, things like no search, quick search, or deep search, depending on how complex the question seems. When web search is used, ChatGPT starts by pulling in a small set of top search results. But ranking alone doesn't guarantee inclusion. The page still has to pass semantic relevance checks. When ChatGPT does search, it doesn't just grab whole pages. It pulls in candidates, scores them by meaning, and feeds only the most relevant snippets into the final answer. It uses tiny chunks of pages, not full articles, and it cares more about meaning than exact keywords. Speed and cost matter. If a page is slow or expensive to process, it might get skipped, even if the content is good. For anything complicated, timely, or niche, fresh web info is key. Training data alone usually isn't enough, so real-time context makes a big difference. If you want your content to show up in AI answers, clarity helps. Clean structure, direct answers, and well-written explanations make it easier for the system to pull useful snippets. And I really like that. Actually, I want to add that to my to my article, the, the part about clean structure and direct answers. Direct answers. Something that I'm very bad at with this podcast because I ramble quite a bit. But yeah, when you are doing your writing, write in a very direct fashion. You can give interesting sentences about you, things that show experience, expertise, authority, trustworthiness, but write in a direct way. And yeah, clean structure is huge. All right. So few ways that you can get shown in LLMs, ChatGPT. This is again from my article and from the SEO community, because the first thing that I'm sharing, one of my favorite tricks from Mr. Harpreet Singh, friend of the podcast, he was the first person to find this out. AB Newswire has a package for, it's $80, you send out one press release, or you buy, I think it's like 83 press releases for $500, which amortizes to $6 per press release. Or you could try to find somebody on Fiverr who is using one of these $500 packages with AB Newswire. But either way, an $80 press release still very inexpensive. You put out these press releases for non-competitive keywords or branded keywords. The press releases actually rank well on Google and they influence LLMs. They influence ChatGPT. They influence AI overviews. So you say something like, easy example, what Harpreet Singh showed. 
He wanted to, to show up for something like best AI SEO newsletter, put out a press release saying his newsletter, SEO Espresso, was the best AI SEO newsletter. And then when you, there's like something like that, like for CMOs. And when you ask ChatGPT, like, what's the best AI SEO newsletter? If you're a CMO, recommends SEO Espresso. Same with AI overviews. And it's from that press release. It was from a site that the press release was syndicated to. So the AB Newswire press release trick, you could use any press release as long as the content is getting indexed on Google. That is a cool trick. You should also know how to find query fanouts. You should also know how to see exactly what ChatGPT is searching. This is a quick 45 second video of how to do that. Brands get shown more on ChatGPT. Uh, yeah. Go to ChatGPT, put in your prompt. Fashion trends for this winter. Right click inspect. Go to network. In the URL, copy what comes after forward slash C. Paste it in the filter. Now refresh the page. Click the orange brackets with the code you just put in. Go to response. Search this code for the word queries. Now you can see what ChatGPT searched the web with. Use the language that ChatGPT is searching with. Put it in your content as H2 sections. Or create entirely new pieces of content for exactly what ChatGPT is searching. That is how you get shown more in ChatGPT. And to learn my exact method of doing SEO that gets paying customers, go to compactkeywords.com. Perplexity, on the other hand, perplexity will just show you all of the queries. You don't have to do anything special to get them. You can also see natural language searches in Google Search Console. Here's another quick video showing you how to do it. Google will actually show you which searches came from AI. Almost nobody knows where to look. Go to Google Search Console. This is Google's own tool for accessing their search index. If you haven't submitted your site to it yet, use this one. Submit a domain property. Go to Performance. Click Add Filter. Then Query. Click Regex. Paste this in. This will show you searches that are at least seven words long. Now you can see the searches written in natural language, which people are using with AI overviews or AI mode. This tells you exactly what to make content on to answer the questions people are asking for AI. Make unique pages targeting these AI assisted searches or add H2 sections for them on your pages. And save years learning how to do SEO that gets paying customers and works with AI at compactkeywords.com. So take those searches, take the language that's being used, use it, in your, use it in your page title, your meta description, your URL slug, your H1, the beginning of your first sentence, use it, create H2 sections for the language on your pages or posts, create new pages specifically for this content, interlink aggressively to the content and get backlinks to the content, really if the language is competitive, if lots of other people are targeting the same content, especially other authoritative websites. These keywords are long tail enough that you might not even need to worry about that. Actually, I also have to share this. This is how to even see the traffic that you are getting from AI. This is with Google Analytics, another short video. Here it is. Google has this hidden feature. If you go to Google Analytics, go to explore, start new exploration, set your dimensions to session source slash medium, page path plus query string, metrics, views, entrances, rows, session source slash medium, page path plus query string, show 250 rows, nested rows yes values entrances views filters paste this in now you can see how much traffic you get from ai chat gpt copilot perplexity you can see the exact pages that are being recommended as well as click amounts to optimize for ai go to perplexity ask your prompt click steps completed perplexity will tell you everything it searched the web with to gather its answer use this language as h2s in your content or create create entirely new pieces of content for exactly what AI is searching. Then you can get shown more in AI. Learn my exact method of doing SEO that gets recommended by AI and that gets paying customers at compactkeywords.com. And the last thing, this was going viral at the end of this year, at the end of 2025, this report from Glenn Alsop on how these best X for Y lists, best project management software and tools, <laughs> that's an example. So these self-promotional best of listicles and positive company announcements are getting recommended by LLM. So easy example, what I just said, you have an article, this is this is real, best project management software and tools. It, the article is written by Asana and Asana ranks themselves number one and they say Asana, best for enterprise companies. They, they rank themselves number one and then ChatGPT is parroting this. AI Overviews is parroting this. Kilo, 
puts out an article on their blog saying Kilo named 2025 best ease of use in gym management software. This is getting recommended by AI overviews and by ChatGPT. So those are examples of the types of self-promotional bests of listicles and positive company updates that are just flooding the internet and influencing LLMs. But the last, you know, the last thing to say, hopefully now you understand that the best way to do good what's called generative engine optimization, answer engine optimization to influence LLMs because it's going to do a search for a lot of queries, for a lot of prompts, it's going to do a search. So the, so what you have to understand is you have to understand how to do the best SEO. And if you want to understand how to do the best SEO, well, that's what you saw at the end of each of the videos that I shared. My SEO course, Compact Keywords, compactkeywords.com. The course is getting crazy reviews and testimonials all the time. I just got this from Earl. Earl said, as I'm filling this out, this is the post-purchase survey that Earl is filling out. He said, as I'm filling this out, I've almost completed the course. If you are trying to rank a website in Google for your business, this course is a must have. Thank you, Earl. This is one of my favorite testimonials that I got like ever from John Ray, maybe like a month or two ago. John said, give it to a junior employee, have them follow it exactly as Edwards laid out, and you're going to gain a six figure SEO level employee just by having them go through this course. Anyway, if you haven't checked it out yet, just give a watch to the video at the top of the Compact Keywords landing page. It will explain a lot, compactkeywords.com. And that is everything that I've got for you on episode 910 of The Edwards Show. This is my daily digital marketing podcast, 910 days in a row doing this show. No days missed. Zero days missed since I started 910 days ago. If you've been watching this one on YouTube over the last year, thank you so much for watching. If you've been listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, thank you so much for listening. And since this is the last podcast of the year, I will talk to you again next year. Bye now.